So today we're talking about Michael Hamer's essay, America's Unjust Drug War. So this topic is part of a much broader topic um, of the criminal justice system. There's a number of issues that we could talk about. Um, we're talking about this particular issue of drug decriminalization. And there's some nuance to it that the article doesn't address in terms of different kinds of drugs. Um, there's also an essay in this unit on capital punishment. Um, but there's also how prisoners are treated and various other things, like so solitary confinement is an important issue. Um, the U.S. criminal justice system makes pretty extensive use of that that other countries don't. Um, so there's a number of different areas. Uh, this essay focuses on a few topics related to the idea that drug decriminalization is morally wrong. Uh, there's a startling claim in the essay, which is that if we're wrong about drug prohibition, that it's not morally wrong to use drugs, then uh, drug criminalization is the greatest moral wrong in U.S. history since slavery. So that's a really interesting way of framing it. Um, the essay notes that at any given time there's 450,000 people in jail in the United States um, incarcerated because of drugs. So that's pretty astounding if you think about it. If it's something that we should not be doing at all, that's quite a huge injustice. So let's look at some of the arguments uh, that uh, Homer has and we'll see what we can make of them. So he Here's a little quote kind of summarizing his project, the essay. He says, Should the recreational use of drugs such as marijuana, cocaine, heroin, LSD be prohibited by law? Prohibitionists answer yes. They usually argue that drug use is extremely harmful both to drug users and to society in general, and possibly even immoral. They believe that these facts provide sufficient reason for prohibition. Legalizers answer no. They usually give one or more of three arguments. First, some argue that drug use is not as harmful as prohibitionists believe, and even that it's sometimes beneficial. Second, some argue that drug prohibition does not work, i.e. it's not very successful in preventing drug use and or has a lot of number of bad consequences. And lastly, some argue that drug prohibition is unjust or violates rights. Um, so uh, Michael Hammer is going to be looking at a few claims that are offered by people who think drugs should be illegal. Those would be prohibitionists. Um, one is that drugs should be illegal because they harm the user. The second is that drugs should be illegal because they harm society. And the third um, argument he looks at is the idea that's an argument in favor of drug legalization, which is that he believes, or he argues that drug prohibition violates the rights of those who want to use uh, drugs. So he's gonna argue that the arguments against drug legalization fail. He's going to argue they don't harm the user, they don't harm society, at least in any way that makes sense to ban them. And he's going to argue that they do, in fact, violate people's rights. All right. So let's get started taking a look at the first argument, um, which is that drugs should be illegal because they harm the user. So within this uh, argument, there's several kinds of harm that um, Hammer looks at. Um, so one is they harm the user, one is they harm the society. So the two versions of a kind of a harm argument. Um, so the, the basic strategies here, and he also looks at the idea that drugs cause some sort of moral harm, even though it's not one of the main sections of the book or of the essay. Um, so the main argument here is a kind of stated in different ways when we talk about harm to the user or harm to society is that there are other things um, that harm the an individual as well. There are things that harm society as well. Not uh, what so the basic sort of line of reasoning is not everything that's harmful can or should be made illegal. There are just certain things that are harmful that there's good reasons to not make illegal. That's the idea of people uh, having a choice of what to make of their life. They can choose things that benefit themselves or things that harm themselves and people are free to make that choice. So he gives a version of this argument um, he, that has two premises and a conclusion. So the first premise is 
drug use is very harmful to the user. Now that's up for debate, how harmful drug use is, um, but that's not the premise that he focuses on. The, the second premise is the government should prohibit people from doing things that harm themselves. And then third pre premise is therefore the government should prohibit drug use. So the second premise is pretty, when you state it that way, it's pretty clear that um, we usually don't take it for the most part that it is the government's job uh, for people to to legislate laws that prevent people from harming themselves. And there's a lot of, um, I guess you might say, theory, that un or maybe a long tradition would be the better way of saying it. There is certainly moral theory, and we've talked about it. So this is basically, it goes back to social contract theory, revolution from uh, religious form of government to secular form of government in which people saw the government's role not as to try and make everyone follow a certain religion, which was a big part of the government's role previously, but the government's role is just to secure freedom from everyone. That's the basic idea of social contract theory, right? That everyone is free to live their lives. We pick out these set of rules together that help us live peacefully, that protect our basic property rights, keep us safe. And within that basic framework, we choose to live our lives however we want. Whether we choose habits that benefit us or harm us, it's ultimately our choice. And the only thing that restricts our freedom is whether we're harming someone else. As long as we're not harming anyone else, then we're perfectly free to live our life however we choose to live it. So that's fundamentally the basic idea of social contract theory. And the argument here, although... Um, the author doesn't sort of frame it in these historical terms, is that drug prohibition goes against the very sort of fundamental conception of government and morality established since, you know, the time of the Enlightenment, um, which is the tradition, of course, that uh, the United States is in with our Constitution, um, guaranteeing civil liberties to everyone. Okay, so the idea is the government's role is generally not to prohibit people from doing, harming themselves. Um, so, a few things that uh, author mentions that are harmful to oneself, smoking tobacco, drinking alcohol, eating too much, riding motorcycles, having unprotected or promiscuous sex, maintaining relationships with inconsiderate or abusive boyfriends or girlfriends, maxing out their credit cards, working dead-end jobs, dropping out of college, moving to New Jersey, and being rude to their bosses. Uh, he says, should the government prohibit these things? Uh, most of us would agree the government should not prohibit any of these things, let alone all of them. And this is not merely for logistical or practical reasons. Rather, we think that controlling those activities is not the business of the government. So again, some of the things we do limit, right? So he gives the example of unprotected sex. So we do regulate sex in a sense in that you cannot have sex without consent, right? So that's the limit on sex. As long as you're not harming someone else, then you can have whatever kind of sex you want. Um, cigarettes, smoke as many cigarettes as you want, but you can't smoke around other people because it's harmful to other people. In pub so smoking in public places is illegal. Drinking alcohol, free to drink as much as you want, as long as you don't get in a car and drive someone, you know, drive somewhere because that's the point when you start putting other people's lives in danger. So in all these different actions and all these different sort of areas, the government's role is seen as protecting people from harm, not protecting individuals from harming themselves. All right, now, uh, the author notes, okay, well, drug use may be different from these other things, but people who are in favor of drug prohibition ha haven't given any clear argument as to why. If, they th if you think that drug use is somehow different from, say, smoking cigarettes or eating too much or working a crappy job when you can work a better one or something, or being in a bad relationship, if you think drug use is fundamentally different in some way, the burden of proof is really on the, the prohibitionist because generally the government doesn't prohibit things that um, harm an individual. So why should it do it in this case? Some special argument is needed in the case of drug use, and he doesn't feel that that's ever been provided. All right, so the second argument is that drugs should be illegal because they harm society. All right, um, so... His initial, um, his response is kind of the same line of reasoning. Well, there's lots of things that harm society. We don't prohibit those things. He says, well, drugs don't harm society nearly as much as 
um, tobacco or obesity. We don't criminalize those. Um, it says the harm to oneself by drugs isn't nearly as bad as choosing the wrong job or marrying a jerk. Uh, it says drugs might harm one's relationship with others, but so does being a jerk, which um, certainly isn't and shouldn't be illegal. And drugs harm drugs harm people's financial lives, but so do a lot of other things. Um, I think there's a little bit of uh, philosophical work that can be done to make it clear why you can't immediately go from the idea that something harms society to the idea that it should be illegal. Um, to suggest that anything that harms society should be illegal would be essentially to take a utilitarian view of how people ought to organize their life, right? So I think more to the point, we could argue that people not giving all their money to charity harms society, right? Or all their uh, excess money or all their discretionary income to charity harms society. Um, you could argue that people not volunteering on the weekends in soup kitchens and pet shelters harms society. You could argue that people not uh, going to college and educating themselves harms society. So there's, um, you could argue that people not working and paying taxes harms society. But we don't require people to do things for the benefit of society. Um, that's That would be a utilitarian view, and um, our constitution, our societies are not organized on utilitarian principles. They're organized basically on some form of social contract where we all agree to follow some rules, and within that framework of what rules we agree upon, people are free to organize their lives how they want, and people are not under any moral obligation to maximize the welfare to society. Um, now, there are certain things that uh, violate other people's rights, um, but it's on if you think, and if you think drugs, uh, drugs being legal violate someone's rights, you'd have to show specifically why that is, because it's far from obvious how it is that uh, drug use violates someone's rights. Um, a little later in the paper, the author gives the example. Well, he says something to the effect of, well, if we knew that someone taking drugs made them violent and criminally insane and likely to assault anyone who came near them, then we might have good reason, or we would have good reason to think they should be illegal, but um, there's no drug that fits that description. Okay, so again, the idea that drugs harm society, um, just to sum up, it's a kind of vague notion. A lot of things harm society, um, but we don't require people to avoid harming society, or rather avoid maximizing or rather pursuing the maximum utility for society. We just require people not violate other people's rights, and it's not clear how drugs uh, do that. Okay, the last argument we get against drug use is an interesting one. It's called the moral harm argument. And there's a quote from James Q. Wilson in here um, making this argument. He says, if we believe, as I do, that dependency on certain mind-altering drugs is a moral issue and that their illegality rests in part on their immorality, then legalizing them undercuts. It does not eliminate altogether the moral message. That message is at the root of the distinction between nicotine and cocaine. Both are highly addictive, both have harmful physical effects, but we treat the two drugs differently, not simply because nicotine is so widely used as to be beyond the reach of effective prohibition, but because its use does not destroy the user's essential humanity. Tobacco shortens one's life. Cocaine debases it. Nicotine alters one's habits. Cocaine alters one's soul. The heavy use of crack, unlike the heavy use of tobacco, corrodes the natural sentiments of sympathy and duty that constitute our human nature and make possible our social life. Um, okay, so here's an argument. Um, and there's another quote from the Office of National Drug Policy Control. Democracies can flourish only when their citizens value their freedom and embrace personal responsibility. Drug use erodes the individual's capacity to pursue both ideals. It diminishes the individual's capacity to operate effectively in many of life's spheres spheres as a student, a parent, a spouse, an employee, even as a co-worker or fellow motorist, and while some claim it represents an expression of individual autonomy, drug use is in fact inimical to personal freedom, producing a reduced capacity to participate in the life of the community and the promise of America.
Okay, so Huimer's main point here, he says, even if drugs cause these effects, it doesn't make sense to criminalize drugs because the effects described are not criminal offenses. So um, it is not a criminal offense to uh, not embrace personal responsibility. Um, so, you know, you can sit at home and play video games all day, and but that's not a criminal offense. You're not embracing personal responsibility. Um, or you could just be at the bar every night drinking. There's plenty of ways to avoid taking personal responsibility. There's plenty of ways to not participate in the promise of America, to not be a good citizen, right? You can never vote. You can just sit at home every time there's an election and not give a crap about what's happening in the country. Um, there's all kinds of things you can do that uh, are less than ideal. Um, so there's a, now, <laughs> the, the claim from the first author, James Wilson, cocaine alters one's soul. And that's an interesting idea. Um, although, I mean, taking soul to be metaphorical is the only way we can in a class like this. Um, is there anything that doesn't alter your soul? I mean, so if you're altering your personality, I mean, does watching reality TV shows alter your personality, alter your soul um, all day versus reading an excellent book like this, The Moral Philosophy of Immanuel Kant? Um, that would certainly alter your soul. <laughs> um, so it's a little, but, you know, we don't think that not getting an education, not reading classic books and literature and philosophy about world history and religion and participating in politics, and all those things, which it would be great if people did more of, certainly, I am all for that. Um, I think philosophy is great, everyone should study it, yay, philosophy, um, and education as well, all forms. And I think education can profoundly alter a person's soul, but it doesn't make sense to criminalize not getting an education, obviously not. So it's not clear, um, no, uh, maybe there's some idea of addiction uh, in there, and that would require much more explication to show that um, addiction in drugs have a uniquely problematic sort of, create a uniquely problematic situation that should make them illegal. One of the things this article doesn't touch on at all is um, whether prohibition, so maybe addiction is a very real issue. Um, this essay doesn't talk about the idea that um, part of the problem of prohibition is not whether something should be prohibited or not, but whether it makes sense to prohibit it. So alcohol, of course, famously was illegal at one point in U.S. history. That turned out to be a terrible idea. It just led to a lot of violent crime, essentially, and people still drank anyways, which is kind of like the situation we have now with drugs. So, And abortion is another issue um, that when abortion was prohibited, people still did it, but there was just a lot of um, black market problems. Um, people were doing them illegally, they were killing themselves, other people were profiting off of trafficking um, people, uh, women, to go get abortions to other countries. And um, So there's a lot of sort of problematic things happened when abortion was legal. So certain things you might think in an ideal world it would be better if they were illegal. Maybe you think about alcohol, or maybe abortion, or maybe drugs, or maybe all three, or two of the three, or whatever. Anyhow, this essay doesn't talk about that, but it's something that should probably, it's worth at least noting. Um, so, it came up because of the issue of addiction. So if you think uh, Wilson's argument specifically has something to do with addiction, um, specifically, it's not clear, or it's, <laughs> there actually is strong evidence that making drugs illegal is not a good way to deal with drug addiction. Although, again, slightly off topic. All right, let's get to this third argument. Um, which is the argument in favor of drug uh, ending drug prohibition. So that's the argument that drug prohibition violates the rights of those who want to use drugs. So here's a quote from the essay. Uh, philosopher Douglas Husak has characterized drug prohibition as the greatest injustice perpetrated in the United States since slavery. This is no hyperbole. If the drug laws are unjust, then we have 4,500 people unjustly imprisoned at any given time. All right, and he goes on to say that Husek's argument 
against prohibition is that it's unjust for the government to punish someone without good reason. There's no good reason to punish people for taking drugs, therefore it's unjust for people, for the government to punish people for taking drugs. Um, the basic idea here is that people have a right to use their body as they choose, or a right to do in general as they please, um, to choose how you want to live your life. Um, and there's no reason to make drugs an exception to that. Um, you have a right to do whatever you want with your life, whether it's surfing or drugs or philosophy or anything else in the world, and as long as you're not harming anyone, go for it. That's the basic idea of our sort of social system organization since the time of the Enlightenment. Um, so a few things that the author mentions, he says, if there were a drug that directly caused one to be violent and harm others, one would not have a right to use it. Um, he says the right to one's body is possibly the most basic right and explains why it's wrong uh, to assault and kidnap, for others to assault and kidnap you. He says the right to one's body, however, doesn't mean that you can use your body however you want, just like the right to property doesn't mean you can use your property however you want, right? So you have a right to own a hammer, you don't have a right to take that hammer and hit someone in the head with it. You have a right to use your body however you want, um, which would imply using drugs. You don't have a right to use drugs and drive a car. Um, so as long as you're not harming anyone else, that's the line that demarcates whether you are um, violating someone else's rights or you're within your freedom to do as you like. All right. Um, So, a couple quotes here, his conclusion. Um, he says, Undoubtedly, the war on drugs has been disastrous in many ways that others can more ably describe in terms of its effect on crime, on police corruption, and other civil liberties, to name a few. But more than that, the drug war is morally outrageous in its very conception. If we are to retain some sort of respect for human rights, we cannot deploy force to deprive people of their liberty and property for whimsical reasons. The exercise of such coercion requires a powerful and clearly stated rationale. Most of the reasons that have been actually proposed in the case of drug prohibition would con be considered feeble if advanced in other contexts. Few would take seriously a suggestion that people should be imprisoned for harming their own health, being poor students, or failing to share in the American dream. It is still less credible we should imprison people for an activity that only may lead to those consequences, yet these and other similarly weak arguments form the core of prohibition's defense. Prohibitionists are likewise unable to answer the argument that individuals have a right to use drugs. Any such answer would have to deny either that persons have rights of control over their own bodies or that consuming drugs constitute an exercise of those rights. We've seen that the sorts of harms that drug use allegedly causes to society do not make a case against its being an exercise of the user's rights over his own body and the claim that drug users can't control their behavior or don't know what they're doing renders it even more mysterious why one would believe drug users deserve to be punished for what they're doing. So just um, as a reminder, the basic claim is that drugs don't harm the individual in a way that we would think they should be illegal, because that's generally not the government's job to prevent individuals from harming themselves, and lots of things harm individuals. Drugs don't harm society in the um, in any way that it makes sense to um, prohibit them. Lots of things harm society, or society would be better off without lots of things, but we still don't think those things are legal. Society would be much better off without soda. We'd have much lower rates of cancer, or diabetes, heart disease, but we're not going to make soda illegal, nor should we. And the third is that, this third argument is that, um, Drug prohibition violates people's rights to use their body how they wish. All right. And I think that is about it. Um, again, this is just one sort of issue in the broader issue of criminal justice um, systems, but it's uh, certainly an important one. And if Wimmer's right that drug prohibition is legal, it's worth considering that this could be the greatest injustice since uh, slavery, as he mentions.